This is the Sadler Five. Devright Homes, when you're looking for attention to detail and a uniquely designed home to suit all your needs. At Devright Homes, we only build a limited number of homes per year, so we can truly focus on what you want out of a prestige home builder. We've continually won awards for excellence, with a record number of wins last year and the proud winner of the Australian Townhouse Villa of the Year. While we love building homes to suit each client, we pride ourselves on designing homes that take into account the special safety needs of some of our clients. If you have a dream, we can make it come true. Talk to Jay Mangano and find out more about Devright Homes at www.devright.com.au. This is the Sattler Files. Welcome back to the Sattler Files and this is Bricks and Mortar when we talk all things building with Jay Mangano from Devright Homes. Welcome back, Jay. Hi, how are you today? I'm good. Now, we were talking on off air about um, the trouble builders have when it comes to getting a house up and, well, basically built because there are a whole lot of considerations that have to happen. You've got to go to shires, you've got to get approvals and it's not an easy task, is it? Oh, it's not. It's not an it's easy It's difficult, task. isn't and, it? And it's expensive. They mm. say that 40% of the cost of a house goes to the government. So, oh. you know, if you... <laughs> <laughs> well, you think for forty percent, you think they'd be more keen to prove uh, to approve things. You would think they would make it easy for you, wouldn't you? You would, you would. And, Could you but imagine they don't. running a business and making it hard for the people that are supplying forty percent of your income? Uh, it wouldn't happen in the real world. No, definitely not. <laughs> but it does happen. Now, tell me, Jay, what happens? Somebody comes to you. They have all. They're all bright and bubbly. They want some plans drawn for their house. What do you do next? Originally, originally, back, back, back in, in the time, day. you just did working drawings, which tells you how you're going to build the house, and then you oriented to the block, yeah. yeah, and then you got engineering, and then you lodge for a building permit. Mm-hmm. It was called a building license back then. Back then, yes. But if it was a development, you had to go to planning approval within the shire to say yes, you could build to a higher density than normal mm-hmm. um, density. So as time went by, the shires just started bringing in their streetscape policy and their this policy and that policy and all these other policies and then they started saying... I'm smiling but I'm not really. We have to go to planning approval for everything. So all these didn't matter and eventually every shire was... You had to go to planning approval for every house you built. Um, which is a long, long process. How long um, is a long process? Are oh, we talking months, weeks? Minimum would probably be two months. And that's when it's happening, when it happens quickly. And that's when it happens quickly. Um, could be anything up to 12 months, oh. 18 months. Um, we've got one in City of Cambridge at the moment that we've been messing around with for... Well, you haven't been messing yeah. around with, but the city of yeah. Cambridge have been messing around with. Yeah, so it's been there something like eight months or something now. Any um, light on the horizon for approval? Um, we have – to create the blocks, you go to WAPC, um, Western Australian Planning Commission. So, yes, we've got approval. After a long messed around process with WAPC, we ne- finally have that mm-hmm. um, approval to m- create the blocks. Right. So now we go back to the plant, to Cambridge with the approval from WAPC and say, come on, guys. Okay, so here, you know. here's the approval. Now, do you want to see our plans? The blocks are – no, we've already showed them the oh, plans. Oh, they've already got the and plans. And they wouldn't so, approve them. Um, okay, so – but. But now we have planning approval from WAPC. We come back and say, well, these blocks are going to be created whether you like it or not. (laughs) Um, So let's um, see if we can come to a mutually agreeable um, development. Yes. Um, And if they don't agree, they're going to end up with the blocks blocks on the ground anyhow. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot they can do about that. So hopefully they will see reason and... Go ahead and let us do it. Yeah. Um, when it comes to dealing with a shire or the or a city, how many people have their fingerprints on your material? No. How one, many people have to go through that approval process? Well, no one ever does anything on their own. Right. So whoever does it, then it has to go to their boss to sign off. 
So there's got to be at least two people involved, sometimes more. Right. Um, so no one ever makes the decision on their own. Right. Um, and you understand that that's got to be that way so that there is no corruption. And Exactly. Um, so you, that is an, an acceptable way to do it, but... They don't need to hold it up and <laughs> they yeah. just need to act on them. Well, it's not like one person is here and the other one is in Timbuktu. They both work in the same office. I mean, it can't yeah. be that hard. No. But last year the government put legislated that we don't have to go to planning approval. They can't make us go to planning approval if we've drawn by the ru- rules, the mm-hmm. R codes, and it's a single residential block, we don't have to go to planning approval. So um, there's a lot we can get through without planning approval right. now. But what happens if you've got a an, a neighbour who doesn't want the house built or doesn't like the style of the house? What happens then? Um, the neighbours don't have a say unless you're doing something that's not that's in the wrong. rules. Yeah. Um, if it's in the if it's not in the rules, then they'll have a say. Um, so they can't block it and hold you up. No, they can't. Right. Um, they can have their say, but. Um, it's still going to be approved yeah. if you've if you've got your ducks in a row. It's going to be approved yeah. anyway. Yeah, um, it's quite just takes a time. It just takes time. Yes, um, a lot of times the shire will go to them and ask them, ask the neighbours, even if they're not going to listen to what they say, they'll ask for their opinion. You think if you're not going to listen to what they say, don't ask for their opinion mm. because that mm. gets people's nose out of joint. They've given their opinion and now you've disregarded it. Exactly. Well, so. You know, they set neighbour against neighbour yeah. and they haven't even moved in. You think it's a silly process. If, <laughs> if you are if you do not care that that's 250 mil higher than it should be and you're not going to listen to the neighbour, don't ask the question. Yes. <laughs> do not ask the question. Yeah. You just create trouble. But you can't reason with them. You can't tell them that because they just can't see it. Mm. They cannot see it. So you've got to walk a really fine line, don't you? That, yes, you do. Um, and... <laughs> There's more than one way to skin a cat, as they <laughs> as, say. As um, they say. You know, so a lot of the trouble we have because we, we build higher ceilings than normal and things like that. So a lot of the problems we have is having um, over three metre walls on boundaries. Mm. Um, but we can do it without it. And you have a box gutter on the a boundary gutter on on the. There's always so, a way. So that the neighbour sees the boundary gutter. It's not in the neighbour's best interest to build it like that because they're better off looking at a solid wall that goes up 250 mil higher than looking at a box gutter, a boundary yeah. gutter sitting on the top of the wall. Exactly. Um, but you know. If, push comes to shove, then you do it like that. Because you do yeah. like to have, in. I mean, in all the um, photos and the times that I've seen your houses, you do like to have high ceilings in there because it just gives such a, a, a feeling of space. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. And, it's, and yeah, it, you can't do that unless you've got your wall high enough to do that. Well, that's right. I mean, it's got to be a, a payoff yeah. somewhere along yeah. the line. Yeah. So... It's all about designing and making it, yeah, get it to what's acceptable to everybody. Um, but, you know, if the rules are there and they're not making any sense, then change them. Mm. Um, and they've got to be kept relevant to how we live too. They, the shires have got this thing about garage doors being horrible. And you think, well, what's the alternative? What, they don't like gar- garage doors? What are you supposed to do? How are you supposed to close your car, your car in then? Well, if you've got a skinny block, um, we can only our garage can only be 50%. Some, some, mm-hmm. some will let us go to 55 mm-hmm. um, because they reckon it's too dominant and wrecks the streetscape and all so sorts of things. So they have a things. thing about roller doors, do they? They do. But So what are you supposed to use it in, in its place? What about our security, though? Yeah. You know, someone comes home at night and gets mugged because... There isn't a door on the garage. Then who's responsible? But I would think um, looking into somebody's garage in the back of their car is far more unattractive than a garage door. Yes. Would one would think so. Uh, unless you're the tidiest person in the world and, and incredibly obsessive compulsive and your garage looks yeah. like a room inside. Well, most people's garages don't look like that. No. And you're only looking at the back of the car anyway. Yeah. Well, the other thing we've got is the surveillance of the street. You've got to have surveillance of the street from a... a main, from where? From a living area. Okay. 
So that doesn't count if you've got a bedroom or, you know. So, so it has to be a living room yeah. looking onto the street. Onto the street. Well, why? But <laughs> who would go? if you? Because you've got to have surveillance of the street so you can see what's going on the street. Can you tell me if you heard someone out in the street breaking into your car, would you go and have a look out the window anyhow? No. I'd hide under the bed. I would too. <laughs> I would too. I wouldn't <laughs> be anywhere near a window. And with the day and everyone has CCTVs now. Yeah. So, and, um, my, and at night had they, you have your curtains drawn or your shutters down or whatever it is yeah. you use, you're not going to, what are you going to do? Start peeking through. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, a lot of things some, are just. Some things are very outdated and stupid, yeah, aren't they? They are. They are. And. Yeah, hey, they single carports, car garages. Well, What's we don't that? live like that. No. We do not live like that. And all you do to make someone put a single car garage on a – you end up with a Street property. Street parking. Yeah, street parking, places that it become rentals because people that own BMWs don't want to park them on the street, don't want them to have them access. So yeah. they end up rentals and you – no, know, so you just – um, well, they are archaic, some of those rules, aren't they? I mean, as oh. we're talking about them now, you just think, well, they really don't make much sense. I no. mean, are they ever going to overhaul them and, and have a oh, look at them? Oh, they overhaul them all the time. But, but why are silly but things they go, like that left but in they, there? But they overhaul them with people from local government that have a barrow to push. So yeah. you so have to take Fremantle, them out of the equation. Well, Fremantle <laughs> Council want to have single there, – there are some buildings going up and they only want to have single car parking. Or no car parking. Well, you can understand that for aged because most people, when they get to be aged, do sell one of their cars. Yeah. So if it's aged residents, you can understand why. Well, car I don't park. think they were. I think these were just this is just but apartments. We don't live like that. We no. don't. No one has one car. Everyone has two cars. So they it's, do. It's just, and then if you've got kids, your kids have got a car. So yeah. if you've got. If, if you've, you've got two or three kids still yeah. at home, I mean, you've got a lot of cars out there. You have. And if you've got nowhere to park them, they're going on the street. <laughs> they're going on the street, which looks untidy. Not only that, it's not safe to have them on the street no. all night. No, no, no. So Unless you're in a really yeah. good area. But even mm. even good areas have their problems. Oh, the area really doesn't make any difference to whether it's <laughs> safe or not. <laughs> some marauding gang will come along. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we've had – we live in the – in the suburbs, and we've had people with cars next door with their windows smashed in the mm. morning. But mm. yeah, it's it doesn't matter where you live. No, we've, it doesn't. No, it makes no difference. No, we've had someone run over our rubbish bin just for fun. Um, <laughs> so. I mean, where, what's the point? <laughs> the funny part but about that it was damage the car. What an idiot! Well, under normal circumstances, it probably damaged a little bit, but it pr- wasn't. But we just cleaned out our pantry. So and the so bin all, would have been full and, and all heavy. the old cans and that. Oh <laughs> so was, no! Yeah, but we had to clean it up. That was oh that so. would. Well, having cleaned the pantry, then you had to go and then clean the street. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, that that all costs money. You know, it's shy. has got to supply a new bin and all those things. Mm. So it was. It's not funny. It's, no, it's it isn't just funny. We shouldn't. We really shouldn't be laughing. No, no. So, but somebody thought it might be fun to run over a rubbish bin. Oh, I think he did about four or five down the street uh, the, the one night. So no, in a stolen car, more likely. Probably wouldn't yeah. have been his car. No, or her so, car. Yeah, probably a stolen car. Probably. Let's just go back to the shires. So. You go through, so we're talking about high ceilings that will make the external wall a little bit higher. Talk about car parking and garaging. I mean, what other rules and stipulations do they put on buildings? I mean, I know every shire and council is different. Um, we have setbacks. So setbacks. You, so um, your walls have to be a certain distance from the boundaries. Your front one is obvious, the obvious one. Yeah. Um, so well, you can't have the lounge yeah. room on the street practically. So, yeah, most of them, single residential be six metres. Some of them are the bigger ones, bigger blocks are nine metres. Um, but then you come down to four metres mm-hmm. for um, the higher density living. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and on a laneway, you can go to 1.5. Okay. So it, you know, but all these things you've got to know. Yeah, you do. Um, if it's got an opening, a major opening, then it's got to be 1.5 from the boundary on the sides and um, one metre if it's got no openings in it. So 
There's lots and lots of rules. Lots of little rules and regulations that mm. you've got to, well, when you're drawing the plans, you've got to bear in mind. And then you've got overlooking issues. If you're doing a two-storey house, you've got overlooking issues and you've got overshadowing issues. You can't be looking over somebody's swimming pool or their backyard and you can't spoil their quiet enjoyment of life. Isn't that what it's called? Yeah, I... I haven't found anyone that wants to sit up there and watch their neighbours yet, but no, oh, oh, there must be one. There must be it's someone bound to be someone that we're protecting that, you know, yeah. <laughs> that, that thinks it's good fun to be yeah. sitting upstairs with a pair of binoculars overlooking a pool. Yeah, I don't know how they got the time. Who would have the time? Who would have the inclination, let alone the time? Yeah. So, yeah, there's so many rules that we have to abide by and – all those rules trip us up when we go to planning approval. Yeah, I can because imagine. Because they, that's what they hanging their hat on, so all these rules, so they can just delay and delay and delay. Um, Do you ever get to the point where you just say to your client, it's too hard, let's not bother? No, we don't, but clients do. Mm. Clients do. Run out of puff. Quite often run out of puff and just go, this is all just too hard. I'm I'm selling the block and I'm going. Yeah. Um. And that's, that's you can understand it though. You can it's sad, but it but it comes back down to it's not your fault. Yeah. The, it's not the client's fault. But if they're wasting money or they well, feel, feel that they're wasting money, you've got huge holding costs. Yeah, so of the course. bank's still making money and still charging interest on a block that they're sitting there that they can't do anything. And with they're still because, living in another home. Yeah, so, so it's it's all cost that just they it just all gets too hard for them. Yeah. So, it happens on a regular basis. I could imagine. But, must be heart wrenching. Yeah. Oh, it is. And you've, you know, you feel for them, and but well, they get all excited. They, mm. you know, their plans are drawn. They're looking forward to their new house. They're picturing themselves in there, yeah. and then it goes away. Yeah, and it's, and for what reason? That's the bit that gets you. For what reason? Not because they've done anything wrong, or the builder's done anything wrong. It's just simply this bureaucratic nightmare of red tape and approvals. Yeah, there was talk that it was going to they were going to do a class action against one of the larger shires. Um, for God, you would have joined in if you had the chance. For plans that have gone in, been in there for months, and come out the same as they went in with no changes. And um, so they're just delaying. So mm. class action, but it would be the clients that would be. Yeah, they're the ones that have lost because yeah. they're paying interest and rent. So I don't know how it happened, but eh, it would be great if it did because it I think that's the them. only. It might thing just that... spruce them up and get them to be accountable. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Oh. Yeah. In this lifetime, Joe, do you think? Well. I, the one that we had that got held up going through WAPC, they produced 35-year-old plans. That's they right. made a decision on 35-year-old plans. And a freeway that <laughs> wasn't oh, that. Yeah, the that freeway was is drawn nightmare. on in coloured pencil and you think, you know, in this day and age we don't draw on plans in coloured pencil. And haven't you realised <laughs> that the freeway is actually there now? <laughs> and you go, this has got to be gross incompetence that somebody looked at plans that are 35 years old. And didn't and notice. thought, we're going to rely on these. Oh, it's a joke. Um, but they won't admit that that no, was of course they gross won't. incompetence. Um and in this case, and that's one that's yeah. holding up a client of yours. That's holding up a building process. Yeah, oh, it's all money. It's all uh, money, and yeah, and that's for units. So tradies are doing it hard at the moment too. There's not a lot of work out there. Yeah. So there's all these workers out there that are doing it hard. Who would love to have a project to work on? Yeah. If yeah. the councils and the shires would just well, let them get a start. Well, it's, and. The suppliers, they're, they're all – everybody's doing it tough. All the way down the line. I mean, one house can employ so many people mm. and, you know, with goods and, and services. And businesses, yes, yeah, support the businesses as well. And they're just not being supported because somebody can play a, a bureaucrat power. somewhere yeah. is, is holding it up. Yeah. Wouldn't like it if it was their house being built, I'm sure. Oh, they have different rules for themselves. <laughs> <Don't>, <laughs> please. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no! Oh, they yeah no they yes they would find a way around it if it was theirs. Yeah, I'm sure they would. Mm. Well, do you think we've beaten up on the shires and the, and the councils enough today? Can never beat up on the shires enough, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think they've got the message. Oh, let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope. 
Jay Mangano from Deverite Homes, thank you so much for joining us. It's uh, been a pleasure as always. You're always wonderful to talk to because I'm incredulous sometimes. I just cannot believe the things that go on. Oh, yeah. No. I know. The mind boggles. The mind does boggle. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Thank I'll you. catch you next time. Right. Bye. You're listening to The Sattler Files. Back shortly with more. This is The Sattler Files. Devrite Homes, when you're looking for attention to detail and a uniquely designed home to suit all your needs. At Devrite Homes, we only build a limited number of homes per year, so we can truly focus on what you want out of a prestige home builder. We've continually won awards for excellence, with a record number of wins last year and the proud winner of the Australian Townhouse Villa of the Year. While we love building homes to suit each client, we pride ourselves on designing homes that take into account the special safety needs of some of our clients. If you have a dream, we can make it come true. Talk to Jay Mangano and find out more about Devrite Homes at www.devrite.com.au This is The Sattler Files.